Imagine being the architect of an ancient castle, not just any castle, but the one that will be remembered through the ages. You lay down the stones, build the walls and raise the towers. It's solid, functional, yet it lacks personality, color, life. That's where your next role comes in, becoming the master artist who breathes life into this structure. You're about to learn the secrets of CSS. The magic that adds color to the walls, intricacy to the banners, and texture to the paths. It's like picking up a brush and painting your imagination across the castle, transforming it from a mere structure to a storybook masterpiece. The syntax is pretty straightforward. It's like giving instructions to a painter about what colors to use on different parts of your castle. A basic CSS rule looks like this. The selector is how you tell CSS which part of your HTML castle you want to style. If you want to style all paragraphs, you can use P as your selector. The property is the specific aspect you want to change, like the color of the walls or the size of the windows. And the value is the specific setting you want to apply to the property, like blue for color or 16 pixels for size. But did you know you can do so much more with these? Don't worry, I'll tell you everything I know. Let's start with selectors. Selectors are like pointing fingers. You can point at one specific thing, like a single tower of your castle, by using an ID or at all similar structures, like all battlements, using a class. There are a bunch of ways to point at things, including by their type, like all paragraphs, or even based on their relationship with other elements. Here are a few you can get acquainted with, which will be more than enough to start your journey. Type selector. This is the simplest form. You target elements by their type, like P for paragraph, H1 for top level headers, or div for divisions, and so on. Class selector. This one allows you to target elements by a class attribute in your HTML. For example, dot menu item could be a class you've assigned to each item in your website's navigation bar. ID selector. When you want to style a very specific element and nothing else, you use an ID selector, like hashtag main gate. IDs are unique. You should only use each one once per page. Attribute selector. This targets elements based on an attribute they have, like type equals text to style all text inputs fields. Pseudo class selector. These are used to define a special state of an element. For instance, colon hoover applies styles to an element when the mouse hovers over it. Pseudo element selector. This allows you to style specific parts of an element, like colon colon first letter, to style the first letter of a paragraph. Descendant selector. This is used to select an element that is inside another element, specified by a space. For example, nav space li would target all li elements that are inside a nav element. Child selector, similar to the descendant selector, but more specific. It targets only direct children of an element using the greater than symbol. UL greater than LI targets LI elements that are direct children of UL elements, not LI elements deeper within. Adjacent sibling selector. This selector targets an element that is immediately preceded by a specific element using the plus symbol. For example, h1 plus p styles a paragraph directly following an h1. General sibling selector. A bit looser than the adjacent sibling selector. It uses the tilde symbol to target all siblings of an element that match the selector, not just the next one. Selectors can be combined and layered in complex ways to precisely target exactly what you want to style, offering a powerful toolset for crafting your website's look and feel. Just remember, with great power comes great responsibility to keep your CSS organized and readable. Properties and values. Imagine we're now looking at a detailed blueprint of our castle, discussing how to bring it to life with color and texture. In CSS, properties and values work together like paint and brushes in an artist's kit, allowing you to specify exactly how you want each part of your web page to look. Properties. Properties are the main aspect of the elements you can style. Think of them as the characteristics of the castle you can modify. Here are some of the most commonly used properties. Color. This property changes the color of the text inside an element. Background color. Sets the background color of an element. Font size. Adjusts the size of the text. Border. Adds a border around elements. Padding. The space between an element's border and its content. Margin. The space around elements, outside of any defined borders. Width and height. These properties set the size of the elements. 
font family specifies the typeface used for text within an element. If you want to know more about how the border, padding, margin, width and height works, I've got a guide dedicated to just those properties called the CSS box model. You'll find a link to it at the end of the video. Values. Values specify the settings for the properties. They are the specifics of the modifications you are making, like the exact shade of blue for your banners or the thickness of your walls. Values can be keywords. These are predefined words that have specific meanings in CSS, like red for the color red or solid for a solid border. Lengths. You can specify sizes in CSS using units like pixels, px, ms, em, or percentages. For example, font size 40px sets the text size to 40 pixels, while width 50% makes an element take up half of its parent's element's width. Colors. Colors can be specified using names, hex codes, RGB values, or HSL values. URLs. For properties like background image, the value can be a URL pointing to an image file that you want to display. Combining properties and values. In your CSS, you combine properties and values into declarations, which are then grouped into rule sets based on the selectors you're using to target elements. Here's a simple example. This CSS rule tells the browser to paint all paragraph text blue and set the font size to 40 pixels. By mastering the art of combining different properties and values, you can craft intricate, visually compelling websites. Much like how combining different architectural elements and colors can turn a simple castle into a breathtaking palace. Enjoy experimenting and seeing what amazing designs you can create. The cascading part. CSS is cascading because styles can overlap and inherit from each other. Kind of like if you decided your castle's battlements should all be blue, but then said the main gate's battlement should be gold. Gold styling for the gate battlement takes precedence because it's more specific, but other battlements remain blue. Cheers to making the web a more stylish place.